Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to another edition of Book Review. In this edition of Book Review, we're going to be discussing a very important topic. That is the topic of water conservation and sustainability and proper usage. And we will be discussing a wonderful book uh, titled Quenching the Thirst, which is available on Amazon.com, authored by George Anandel. And uh, to discuss this wonderful book with us, we brought with us an expert in this field, uh, here, based here, a professor at the German University in Cairo. Uh, as I mentioned, he's an expert in water conservation usage, and we'll talk about sustainability and how we can make a sustainable future for our children in this world where water is becoming an increasingly scarce resource. Of course, I'm speaking about a good friend of ours, Dr. Sameh Kantush. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sameh. Assalamu alaikum. Well, first of all, thank you very much for welcoming us to your office here at the GUC, the German uh, University in Cairo. I certainly appreciate your time. Welcome uh, with your group for German University in Cairo. Uh, my name is Samia Kantush. I'm an associate professor for water resources and uh, dam engineering in uh, at German University in Cairo, civil engineering department, faculty of engineering. Yes, uh, this, uh, this book is really very interesting and um, uh, talking about a very ser serious and important topic, which is uh, thirst, quenching the thirst. I would like to start with what does it mean, uh, quenching? Certainly, good point to yeah, start. Yeah, <laughs> which is really very important because in material sciences, uh, quenching is the rapid cooling of workpiece or small part of iron which is very heated by uh, fire and then you put it directly in uh, water, it will be cooled down and it will be quenching. Okay. So the author is really <coughs> very interested in how to... Um, uh, help the society, all, all world or human, to um, sustain a water supply system. And if we would like to talk about, as you have mentioned, you said about uh, sustainability or sustainable development. Yes. And uh, what does it mean or what <coughs> is sustainable development? Uh, sustainable development seeks to meet the needs and uh, aspirations of the present without comprising the ability to meet those of future. Okay. So future <coughs> generations are really very important to think about them while you are designing and making some present uh, projects. Of course. And it's really very uh, important to have integrated uh, uh, water resource management from the point of view how to find or how to solve the present future in order to reduce the cost for the future generation. If you don't take this in our consideration, that will impose more cost on the society in future. Definitely, such a consideration will increase a little bit the total cost of your project which you are, you are uh, constructing now. But if you consider that, you reduce the cost uh, uh, for the future generation. Doctor, thank you for those wonderful points. Uh, in your expert opinion, however, do you believe this is possible to reach a sustainable future for water uh, right now without jeopardizing the future? Do you think it's possible? Yes, definitely. Um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us uh, lots of nice natural sources of water and a river or river flow is one of the sustainable uh, uh, water supply, fresh water supply. And what is really very important in this book, he is discussing about uh, two issues or two sources of fresh water. One is river flow and the other one is groundwater. Okay. And he has mentioned that river flow is the only or let's say is the only sustainable source of fresh water comparing to the groundwater groundwater somehow a little bit not sustainable is that right as is you are driving water from groundwater and then you after a little time it will be uh, finished is that right? and the other problem of groundwater is uh, mismanagement or or um, uh, withdraw of water or um, is, is not uh, it's not clean it's, it's, not, it's clean. not difficult to it's not easy from the engineering perspective to withdraw from the ground it's, it's easy but uh, the problem is, is, is there is no um, uh, coordination between the people oh, you I know see. you you are taking more water from one point and less water from other I point see. 
by pumping wells and this will create problem and may dry the water or groundwater from such a pumping wells after oh, a little time. I see, okay. But river flow is continuously and fresh water is uh, sustainable by river flow. Wonderful. And this is one nice gift from Allah subhanahu yeah. wa ta'ala. Yeah. Doctor, you had mentioned the author, George Annandale. Yes. Uh, can you mention a little bit about the author to our viewers? I know he's a personal friend of yours. Yes. Uh, can you speak a little bit about him? Yeah, Anandel is really one of my best friends. He's really one of the experts in the uh, Society of Water Resource. And as I told you, he's an engineer, um, author for many books, uh, not only this one. Uh, he was born in uh, South Africa. So he's, let's say, he's somehow African uh, point of view. And he, this part of the world is really very dry and has lots of droughts problems also. Okay. See, he, it was inspiring him to be a water resource engineer. And currently he's uh, residing in Denver, Colorado, with his wife and Nicola. And his work has uh, entailed extensive travel on every continent of the world except Antar Antarctica as a principal with an internationally renewed environmental consulting firm. He has a one consulting firm go, called uh, Golder Associate. Um, um, Anandel is an engineer, as I told you, and he's uh, uh, important uh, um, uh, references, quenching the thirst. Uh, Scour Technology he has another book about reservoir sedimentation, which is really very important. Topic that sounds like well. an interesting topic. Maybe we could talk about it in the future yes. episode as well. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, he's an international water power and dam construction construction uh, uh, engineer. Has lots of international contribution. Yes, he's, he's really one. Is uh, is really. A very unique engineer from the point of view of his um, international experiences. He saw or solved or participated in lots of designing dams, and, uh, solving problems about uh, the war sedimentation. He's one of the unique person who is Professor Sumit Itzer from Kyoto University and other people about sediment management techniques, how to uh, manage the sediment in the reservoir, which is really very important and a very unique topic we can extend discuss. our discussion later on about. Well, thank you for sharing that uh, wonderful information. I believe uh, this topic of water is perhaps more important than the topic of oil in the for future exactly, generations. Exactly, yes. <laughs> but perhaps we can get into the book here. Uh, chapter one, the first chapter he titles, Chapter One, Water, A Scarce uh, Resource. And he has other topics here, sustainable development, principal water uses, growing demand for water, um, fresh water sources, and their uh, the content of the book. Uh, perhaps we can speak a little bit chapter by chapter, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, chapter one, water, a scarce resource. Yes, um, this really very uh, important chapter and he's giving uh, an introduction about uh, concerns about the future scarcity of fresh water, which is raised so often that nowadays recently also and makes lots of conflicts and problems, uh, even if we look for one of the rivers which we are in Egypt now is Nile River and this has lots of conflict and controversial problems between different countries as a water sharing or water benefit. Uh, for many challenges uh, to supply enough water to a growing world population appears to be really uh, instrumentable uh, resulting in a complacent attitude. However, such attitudes uh, to a problem of this uh, magnitude are uh, 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 ill-advised, mismanagement. There are lots of problems and we can find a solution. The solution to supplying fresh water to most people is straightforward and easily understood. All that is needed is insight, which is a, 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 a effort obtained by adopting a system approach to uh, analyzing the problem. In fact, as you have mentioned that the purpose of this book is to explain a general uh, audience what uh, we as um, a community could do to ensure reliable and sustainable supply of fresh water to the vast majority of people. This is one of the most yeah. important And for things. future generations as well. For future generations, yeah. yeah. So uh, we 
we have uh, like eight chapters you have mentioned. Yeah, sure, certainly. Before, if we go to chap before we go to chapter two, doctor, uh, you briefly mentioned your native Egypt and the water problems or challenges facing Egypt. Uh, do you just briefly, if you could mention, is there what is the in your expert opinion, what is the way forward for a country perhaps like an Egypt situation here, um, water conservation, uh, desalination plants? What do you what what does the future hold for a country like Egypt with regards to water? Yeah, I think uh, Egypt are facing really a challenge with uh, managing its water resources. As uh, the Nile Basin countries, most of the Nile Basin countries now are thinking uh, uh, a unilateral way. Yes. They are not thinking by integrating or uh, looking forward how to benefit sharing from the water for all 11 countries. Right. And this is really one of the serious problems facing Egypt nowadays that we are the most downstream countries yes. and the most upstream people would like to really to do unilateral projects right. without looking to the downstream. Yeah. We are in need for international help, for international intervention to solve such a problem sure. because most of these upstream countries are thinking that doing such a project will not make impact on Egypt. Definitely, such projects will have a severe impact on Egypt. Okay. Our water quality and water quantity will be really damaged. Okay. And without international help to solve such controversial problem like World Bank or other people, even United States or United uh, other Nations people, project. they have to really think that without solving or bridging between these countries, that will cause lots of problems for peace yeah, uh, sure. situation in this region of course so uh, uh, through your program I really would like to call for such uh, intervention to help Egypt because we have a severe problem nowadays about water sharing and benefit with uh, Nile Basin countries yeah. but definitely we will find that if we don't find a solution now first we have to go for water desalination this yes. is one of the solutions uh, of course, adapting our uh, irrigation system is, is really very crucial now. Yes, those are wonderful points. Thank you yeah. for mentioning those. We're going to take a short break. When we get back, we're going to move on to Chapter 2 okay. and get to, uh, the, to the rest of the book, inshallah. And you guys at home, don't go anywhere. We're having a wonder, wonderful discussion uh, discussing this book, uh, Quenching the Thirst, talking about water sustainability uh, and conservation for the future generations. Uh, water, of course, is a gift that Allah has granted us. So it definitely is our responsibility uh, to manage it correctly. You guys, so stay tuned for more book review. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back uh, to book review. In this episode, we're joined by Dr. Sam Kantush, an expert in water conservation and sustainability and management. Uh, and we're speaking about how to build a better future regarding water sustainability for future generations. And we're speaking about a, a book of, uh, written by his colleague, doc, uh, Dr. George Anandel, uh, Quenching the Thirst, which I believe is available on Amazon.com. Doctor, thank you for staying with me. I certainly so appreciate much. it. Perhaps we can move on to chapter two and chapter three. Uh, yes. Chapter two, uh, Mr. Anandale has written here, freshwater sources, as well as the need for storage, which is a, a very yes. interesting topic as well. Uh, perhaps you can start with chapter two and chapter three. Exactly. Thanks so much again. In chapters uh, two and three, uh, the author identified the water source with the greatest potential for sustainable development. For example, for instance, uh, river water, which is, as we said, it is the most sustainable um, uh, resource. resource. The variable flow in rivers requires the use of reservoirs and dams. This is definitely reservoir storage to ensure reliable supply of fresh water. Okay. And the principal features of reservoir storage and how it relates to the demand or requirement of water, reliability of supply and the dominant hydrologic. Hydrologic means the characteristics of the river flow and uh, uh, um, how the flow is variable from time to time. So you are in need for storage water to store uh, in, in a specific dry season. 
Moreover, one of the important things is the effect or the impact of climate change. Wonderful. Climate change impact is really on water supply reliability are presented in chapter four as well. Okay, wonderful. You, you will see now. Okay, well thank, thank mm -hmm. you, doctor. Uh, he didn't mention uh, many interesting things here, but when we speak about water storage, if I can just briefly ask you a question, uh, building reservoirs and dams, does this have a negative effect on the environment? Okay, this is really a very interesting question. Dam impact is really a very long history, and once you construct a dam along a river, you break the uh, equilibrium yeah, of the river. Super. Equilibrium means that natural things, water, are coming with sediment. This sediment is very important for the uh, habitat or ecosystem. Yes, yes. The fish or all uh, uh, microorganisms exist in the water, taking its web uh, food yes. from this moving of the sediment. Super. So once you trap everything by the dam, that will make in equilibrium for the river yeah. and it changes the river health index. Okay. And that will cause lots of bad impact on the downstream countries. Okay. Not only stop water, but stop sediment as well okay. will cause a severe problem. And is there any solution to consider this during design and construction of the dam? Yes. Okay. So we have to really consider every details before construction. Thank you, thank you. In doctor. order to have an integrated point of view, right. you can solve any problems. But once you say, okay, we will neglect that because it will, have, it will cost us a little bit more, right. so that will be a problem. But doctor, uh, before we go on to chapter four, that was a wonderful point that you made. That in fact, you can build reservoirs uh, taking in mind environmental concerns. And downstream people. Yeah, also. yeah. Interesting. Uh, chapter four: Climate change. You you briefly mentioned climate change, doctor. Yes. But this is a controversial subject, isn't it? Uh, but you're sure and certain that climate change is having a negative effect on the water source around the world. Um, no, there are two scenarios. One scenario is optimistic one, which is saying the water uh, resources will increase. When we call it with with scenario, okay. with scenario, because it's really climate change change impact is not certain you know okay there are several scenarios by ipcc um, uh, intergovernmental uh, agency agency okay. so this really um, not uh, precise prediction but other scenario is um, saying dry season will come and the high temperature will increase right. green greenhouse impact will affect on the water availability okay and we will face a shortage of water supply okay and this is definitely exists in our region we can very easily remark that the temperature are increased and the uh, rainfall has will decreased. has decreased a little bit yeah okay yeah. but either way climate change is definitely definitely happening we don't know the effects that it will have but there is the climate is being affected being affected yeah okay we can we can say we that we can say yes okay. and we have to prepare but yeah. this will cause um, a, a high cost, as I told you, if you build a dam with a small reservoir or la very large reservoir because it will be dry. Right. That right. will cause, yeah. so you have to make the, a good study, good balance, yeah. good design. And this book is one of the unique yeah. things who discussing this issue, large or small reservoir. Okay, right. Yeah. And this is important to take care of. Okay, yeah. wonderful point. Well, doctor, thank you for mentioning those interesting points, but perhaps we can move to chapters five and six. Uh, reservoir sedimentation and preserving space, uh, two interesting topics. Uh, perhaps you can start with chapter five and perhaps you can begin by uh, defining sedimentation for, for our viewers and myself who don't have a clear understanding of what that means. Yeah, sedimentation is a material like sand, clay, silt, all of this okay. we call it as a sediment. Okay. So very simply these materials with different grain sizes, Okay. with different distribution density so this is a sediment material we call it sediment okay so it's a source of food for the habitat yes. in the river okay and the ecosystem of the river itself and is a way or the media which transport the food from one location to another location okay so very this important. is really very important for the river itself okay so now for liver health index okay which you had mentioned but now if we speak about reservoirs um, how would somebody building a reservoir take this into consideration? 
because uh, here he says, you know, people are, he says reservoir sedimentation running out of space. Yes. So uh, how does it affect the reservoir? Yes, uh, sedimentation, uh, once the flow is coming and you stop the flow in front of this, uh, in front of the dam, that will make the velocity or the flow very uh, low velocity. Yeah. So any particles, stone, materials coming will be deposited in the bottom of the reservoir in front of that dam. Okay. And with time, uh, if the river is ha have high sediment concentration, that will increase the deposition sure. of the sediment and will reduce the volume which is allocated for the water. Certainly, great point. Certainly. So after some reservoirs are filled with sediment after 10 years. So it means that your dam or project is not cost efficient. Yeah. <laughs> and that also uh, Anandel is discussing in this book. Okay. How to really choose your reservoir size, how to integrate some solution before construction. Okay. Because there are there is no solution if you come after several years and you have your problems and you say, okay, we would like to solve the problem of reservoir cementation for that dam. Right, yeah. Definitely it will be possible, okay, but it will have higher cost. But way. if you consider that from beginning, like in Japan, Japanese, they are very unique for one specific technique. They are making bypassing the sediment from upstream, from front of the dam to backside of the Wonderful. dam, which is making uh, reduce the instability of the river. Right. Okay, they open the gates of the bypassing, and then the water and sediment will be moved to the Wonderful. downstream people, and they don't store the sediment in the reservoir. Wonderful. So yeah, this yeah. is a, a nice solution, but a little bit cost, you know. Okay, but it's an innovative. In, in innovative, great. yes. It's a Japanese and uh, most of Japan, Switzerland also is one of the... And sustainable for future generations. Yes, yeah. perfectly. Uh, yeah. Chapter 6, briefly, Doctor, he talks about uh, preserving space, uh, warping, revegetation, checking dams, contour farming, yes. bypass tunnels. These are all things, methods to fix... Techniques, exactly. Okay. Uh, how, to, how to really solve the problems of the uh, sediment management in order to reserve or preserve some uh, volume for the reservoir. Okay, wonderful. Now if we move to Chapter 7, uh, Sustainable Development Doctor and Harmonizing Needs, uh, Current Approaches, uh, Their Inadequacies, as well as Chapter 8, Secure in the Future. I suppose these are the most important chapters of the book because they are looking forward. Uh, so perhaps we can speak about these topics. Is there a way to uh, sustainable development? Can we protect the water sources for future generations? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the reasons for the oversight are explored in Chapter 7, which is, uh, I mean, um, uh, uh, the fact that reservoir sedimentation management has not been historically implemented as a standard design and operating features. And as I said, this reason uh, uh, for this oversight are explored in Chapter 7. And uh, coming again to the economic evaluation and engineering design approaches, as I told you, that are currently uh, implemented or development for sustainable freshwater supply systems and rivers are identified in Chapter 7. As part of the discussion of sustainable development, it is shown that incorrect economic determination of uh, the value of reservoir storage uh, space results in incorrect assessment of the benefit provided by the implementing uh, reservoir sanitation management techniques to facilitate sustainable development. One. Implementation of an alternative approach which is based on the fundamental principle of the economics of uh, accessible resources or uh, uh, recti rectify these historic problems. Well, we certainly appreciate uh, yes. your time, Doctor. Unfortunately, we're out of time for this episode. <laughs> uh, perhaps you can promise to come back and do another episode, yes, of course, yes. uh, in the future, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Maybe I, I can invite also Anandel to talk a little bit about this perhaps by phone also, if you like. Wonderful. That's, Sounds that's great. That can be, yeah. Th thank you so much, inshallah. Dr. Samak. Thanks and so much. Thank you so much. And you guys, I don't thank you for staying tuned and enjoying this episode with Dr. Samak Antouche from the 
German University in Cairo, who was speaking about this wonderful book, Quenching the Thirst, written by George Enendale, which was speaking about water conservation and uh, obtaining a sustain sustainable future, uh, water future for our future uh, generations. You guys, thank you, as always, for supporting uh, Huda TV. Uh, until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.